Hey everyone, I'm Alex and you're on the Navi Big channel. Today I'm going to review this Airbus H175 rescue helicopter set from the LEGO Technic series. In a nutshell, this is a brilliant piece of engineering. But first things first, let's start with the overview of the set and then dive into details. The set number 42145 contains 2001 pieces. It was released on the 1st of August 2022 and its official price is 210 US dollars or euros. Inside the box we have 16 plastic bags of small to medium size, a bag with blades, a bag with an electric motor, a small cotton with a battery box of a large envelope. Inside the envelope we find a book with building instructions and two sheets of stickers. On the first sheet the stickers are numbered from 1 to 27, but some of them have the same number so there are more than 30 of them in total. On the second sheet there are only two stickers and both are transparent. The book with instructions looks very thick, it has almost 400 pages, but there is no information about the actual Airbus H175 whatsoever, which is disappointing. We've seen some numbers about the real helicopter on the box, but that is it. At the end of the book we have a description of the LEGO model functions and side-by-side -side visual comparison of the model and the real machine. And here's the list of the parts. There are some new really awesome pieces in the set. A couple of words about the pieces. Obviously that's a true Technic set, so expect to see a lot of lift arms, axles, gears, short and long pins. There are several new pieces in this set. The battery box with two manual switches, three pieces that combine together form a swash plate mechanism, bottom piece with four pin holes, the top one with five pin holes, and a ball joint connector with one by one opening. And that is how they work together. Also, we've got a new green gear with 20 teeth, which looks like bevelous variation of the existing blue 20 tooth double bevel gear with clutch on both sides. And finally, the main rotor blades with yellow rubberized tips and 5 lift arm connector with a central opening. And if the new battery box and the gear piece are definitely great additions, but as for swash plate pieces and 5 lift arm connector, I feel like their application is rather limited but they can be used to significantly change the geometry of some future models. Speaking about stickers and taking in consideration that it's a 2000 piece set, it doesn't feel like we have too many of them here. And they're good. It can be tricky to work with those which are applied on the curved surfaces, but in general I had no issues with them. One small note though is that the backgrounds of red and white ones are slightly different from the color of pieces on which they are applied, but that doesn't bother me at all. Ok, building process. Building process is split into 5 stages. Each stage consists of 3 to 4 plastic bags. I found the stages to be quite large and would prefer to have more of them but smaller. If you want to build this set within a single session, that would probably take you about 4 to 6 hours. The most interesting stages of the build, in my opinion, are the third and the fourth ones. During the third stage we assemble the back side of the helicopter body, where we work on engine and transmission. And at the end of it we can see all these gears connected and working in sync. Then you attach it to the rest of the body and install the electric motor. That is always a really satisfying part in the Technic sets. The fourth stage is where you build the tail part of the helicopter, installing the shaft that moves the tail rotor and tail rotor itself. Let's talk about functions and features. The set comes with three motorized and a number of manually controlled functions. I'm gonna tell you about motorized first. On the left side of the helicopter we can find a couple of switches. The black one at the bottom turns on and off the engine itself the electric motor in this case. The top one is the rotor gearbox switch. It's responsible for changing the speed of rotors, low speed, high speed and neutral position. The rear rotor is synchronized with the main rotor, so its rotation speed cannot be controlled independently. On the right side we have two more switches, the top one controls the winch. I didn't stress test it, but the winch seems to be strong and capable of handling loads made of Lego pieces. The bottom switch is responsible for retraction extension of the landing gear. Nice feature. I didn't expect this one to be motorized actually. 
and while we're speaking about chassis, this set doesn't have wheel steering or any suspension. I'm okay with that, it's not the point for this set. Now let's move on to the manual functions. One of the obvious things you notice is doors. We have two sliding doors at the back. If you open them, you won't see any realistic details inside the cabin. Instead, you can see some technical internals, rotor parts and hardness cable that connects the electric motor and the battery box. At the front, we have two doors for accessing the cockpit. They open butterfly style, up and out. Inside it, there are two pilot seats, a dashboard made with stickers and levers that are connected to the swash plate mechanism. Those are cyclic stick and a collective lever. Speaking about swash plate and steering, it's fair to say that it is the most advanced mechanism of the set. Like in the real helicopter, the cyclic stick is used to control the main rotor in order to change the helicopter's direction of movement. In a hoover, that means the cyclic controls the movement of the helicopter forward, back and laterally. The collective lever changes the pitch angle of all the main rotor blades collectively, all at the same time. In real life, as a result of this input, the helicopter increases or decreases its total lift. In level flight, this would cause a climb or descent, while with the helicopter pitched forward, it will produce an acceleration together with a given amount of ascent. As you can see, these levers emulate the controls of the real helicopter. But the thing that we miss in this set is anti-torque pedals. So here we cannot control the pitch of tail rotor blades. But if you want to see how these work in a stationary position, at the top of the model we've got a cowling that consists of two separate coverings. Sliding them apart allows you to see moving parts of the engine and swash plate mechanism better. That's actually not an obvious feature of the set. And even if you build it yourself, but didn't pay a lot of attention to the last pages of the building instructions, then it's easy to overlook it. As for other small features, we have a spotlight mounted on a gimbal on the left side. There is also a ball piece in the front part of the hull that may represent a flare system, forward-looking infrared system that makes it possible to see in the dark. Or maybe it's a camera. We also have a hook which is hot connected to the bottom of the hull. And that is it aesthetics as a display model. I absolutely adore it. It looks complex and realistic. It's very recognizable as an actual Airbus H-175 helicopter. I love the emergency service livery consisting of red and white colors mostly and the neon yellow accents. Also, it's worth knowing that the model is quite big. I mean, it's obvious, but I didn't realize that I would not be able to put it on my shelf. I leave all the dimensions in the description below. But just saying that the blade span is 52 centimeters or 20.5 inches, so the shelf should be rather wide. Two things I like, two things I like to see improved. I wanted to criticize this set a little bit, but I actually can't. This set gives me everything I expected from LEGO Technic helicopter and even more. If I think really hard, I would probably come up with something about that it feels a bit flimsy overall, but that is a nitpick. The model stays together and doesn't fall apart at all. So, would I recommend buying this set? If you are a LEGO Technic fan or a helicopter geek, then yeah, absolutely, no questions asked, go for it. If you are not a LEGO Technic fan but want to try something new or want to learn more about helicopter engineering, still, I wouldn't hesitate to recommend it to you. If that's your first LEGO Technic set, it may be challenging, but I don't think it will disappoint you. In the end, it's not a rocket science to build it. I know it's a bit pricey, but you get a lot of fun for your money. And that's all. And if you watched this video to this point, please consider giving it a thumbs up and maybe subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you later in the next video. Until then, bye bye.